Hello. So, um, I was thinking about making a video about how to wake up consciously and how to help others wake up as well. And I started taking notes on it, and the notes became rather extensive. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to give a, a brief outline, and uh, once I get things more organized, um, I'll put out some uh, more videos about it. Um, but I just became really uh, inspired to to do this, so I'm here to share it with you. Um, first, I just want to say that to wake up consciously isn't something that takes uh, much effort, or really any effort at all. To wake up is a natural thing. Um, we do it every day, for example, right? Uh, you're dreaming, and then either alarm goes off or just you naturally wake up and you open your eyes and that dream fades away and you wake up to what you perceive as reality. Um, there is another level of awakening that isn't as literal as what I described. A lot of people are feeling it now. Some people are in denial of it and some people um, are not even aware of it or maybe confused by it. So this is just uh, to help people to understand that what's what's happening is is normal and natural. Uh, the first steps um, in this consciousness awakening is to simply become aware and acknowledge what's going on. Um, simple enough. Uh, like become aware that um, let's see, for example, the banking system is totally corrupt. And, you know, with all the banker bailouts, it doesn't make any sense that all these foreclosures are happening. This kind of thing. Like, you can tell, there's just something not right there. We need to become aware of that. And we need to acknowledge that. Um, the next step is we need to stop making excuses for it or denying that it's going on. And excuses being, oh, well, that's how it's always been. Or, oh, I'm just one person. What can I do about it? Or... Yeah, those are politicians or bankers. Yeah, of course they're corrupt. Of course we're helpless. You can't fight City Hall. Blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. So stop making excuses and denying what's going on. Very simply. And the third step is let others know what's going on. Because um, it, it, as an individual, yeah, you might feel helpless. Like, oh, I, I can't, you know, go to Washington, D.C. every day and protest, you know, this ridiculous law that's being passed. Like, just on my own. So what you got to do is you got to let others know what's going on. Even if they're not there to physically uh, voice their opinions or, or their feelings, at least they can hold it in their awareness that this isn't the kind of life that they want to have. And the more people that feel that way or think that way, uh, the more momentum this awakening will, uh, will gain. Um, I'll use the analogy of uh, if you can imagine yourself as a candle right? And uh, you see other candles around you that aren't lit. And you just kind of very gently light the candle. And you don't lose anything. You're, you're still burning bright and strong. You don't lose anything by giving your light away. You just illuminate another candle. And the more light there is, the more you're able to see. This is why if you really want to wake up and see what's going on, try and wake other people up. It, don't worry if like they they make fun of you or deny you or whatever. You're, you're planting these seeds. You're planting these thoughts, these ideas into their head. Uh, some people, I, I find awakening to be very empowering. And some people are afraid of that power because they're so used to giving it away that to take it back or to acknowledge that it's theirs um, puts some responsibility onto them that they're afraid of or they, they don't know how to handle. You can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle your power. Come on. Um, okay, four minutes, 23 seconds. This one's got to, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. Uh, just surely you must have heard about the 100 monkey theory. Um, basically, these monkeys on one island were taught how to wash their bananas before they ate them. Um, and once that small community of monkeys started getting into that habit, another community of monkeys on, the com on a completely, either the, the other side of the island or on a different island, uh, innately started doing, uh, started doing the same thing without anybody showing them how. So that in itself proves 
on some level there is a conscious connection between all of humanity. So even if you don't physically touch someone or speak to them directly, um, what you have to say and think has an effect on them. This is important because um, everything that you think and say does affect everything on Earth. Um, and then it comes back to you. Um, critical mass. I've heard uh, several times that once we reach critical mass, then this conscious awakening will just pick up momentum and everyone will become enlightened, blah, blah, blah. Um, critical mass sounds like a really large number, but it's only 3% of the population. It kind of makes sense, too, if you think of, uh, say, a domino effect. to, to if, if, like, uh, like in the movie V, where with all of his planning on, you know, taking down the system, he has time to set up this vast array of dominoes. And with just one flick from one domino, it just sets off this beautiful chain reaction with this intricate, you know, falling of the dominoes. And it was just, you know, what, it, what needed to happen. One domino, 3% of the population. So don't underestimate the power of your words and your thoughts and who you are. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, there's the distractions that might keep people from this conscious awakening, that might keep them from information. Um, distractions such as sex or video games with lots of violence, uh, movies. Um, and, of course, this thing I called trigger words. Trigger words are words like conspiracy theory that might make someone turn away from information because, oh, they it's just a conspiracy theory. How much, you know, how, how true could it be, blah, blah, blah. This has happened to me. Um, uh, people have commented on either comments I've made on videos or whatever saying, oh, I, I looked at her channel and she's, she's one of those spiritual people. So, uh, la, 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 la. What can I say? What can I say except you do that? Trigger word. Spirituality. Um, another one is uh, that I find a big one is uh, anti-Semite or Holocaust denier. Um, these are big trigger words because it will definitely keep a good percent of the population from either listening to what you have to say or even liking you. Um, an example of this would be the president of Iran, who uh, I hear, oh, he's anti-Israel, blah, 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 which, like, triggers something. But then I hear him say something about how he believes that 9-11 was an inside job. Now, I'm not one who likes to agree with anti-Semitic Holocaust deniers, but on that particular point, I, I, I kind of see what he's saying, you know? And this is just, again, another example of how, on some level, we are all connected, no matter how high or low or how far apart or how different we are. Um, yeah, so I, I realize at that point, like, that, that, that's definitely a trigger word. Um, it's also a word uh, that has been used to describe uh, David Icke. Um, and which, which I find kind of funny because I've heard it on the news. Oh yeah, he's known, you know, he's an anti-Semite and his writings are all anti-Israel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ha having here heard what he had to say and read some of his stuff and also having seen video footage of the meeting at, ironically, the Anti-Defamation League where that rumor was actually manufactured kind of makes it, you know, kind of discredits the whole the, the whole trigger word for me for anti-Semite. The next time I hear somebody, oh yeah, he's just an anti-Semite, I'm going to be like, oh, let me hear what he has to say that, you know, he's got to be called that kind of name. I mean, come on, David Icke, he talks about the, 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 the most powerful, rich people in the world being uh, blood-drinking, Satan-worshipping, pedophilic aliens from another planet that are controlling us by the moon. I mean... On the surface, this sounds like outrageous information, right? You'd think that it could just kind of stand alone as far as people just like, oh, please, like, do I really need to hear that? Like, come on now. But they got to make something up to try and discredit him? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. And granted, it does sound kind of far out, but, I mean, he's been talking about it for like the past, what, 15, 20 years with a straight face presenting very compelling evidence and information showing us how 
the symbolism is there right in front of our faces and through our history and through our holy scriptures. Like, wow, come on now. I have no problem believing it. I mean, I heard about the reptilians even before I heard about David Icke. So when I hear him talk about it, I was like, oh, okay. More acknowledgement. Anyway, so it's going on 10 minutes, 22 seconds, so I'm just going to put an end to it there. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you stay till the end, thank you very much. Um, share this with your friends, and I will see you soon.